country. Thank you. And it's a really, actually, it's a good question. All right. So the question is, I should have really added it to, added it to this, which is when does my bias change? All right. Uh, fundamentally. <clears throat> so um, my bias will tend to change uh, fundamentally, mainly, uh, of course, uh, during the data, I tend to have a longer term bias. So what, what does that mean? I guess it's more to do with um, weighing up the, um, uh, the, the data. So of course, we focus on GDP, uh, interest rates, and inflation. Now, um, for me, if if it's it's mainly about obviously inflation, right? Inflation and um, sorry, uh, GDP and uh, inflation influence interest rates. So interest rates won't go up or down unless we see the data from GDP and inflation. So for me, it's more about. Um, understanding where we're potentially going from uh, from from this these two data, right? So let's say, for example, um, uh, we're in a trending. Uh, we see GDP and it's and it's trending to the upside. So we've got a few good readings, maybe one, you know, uh, poor reading, but generally the overall, you know, two, three, last two, three readings regarding GDP um, is on the is is on the uptrend now. Um, I'm not going to change my view if, for example, we get one bad um, GDP viewing because it's it's not just about again the numbers; it's also about uh, digging a bit deeper. So, for example, that one bad GDP re reading could be as a result of um, uh, uh, the coronavirus, right? Um, yeah, quarterly or monthly, uh, Eddie. Yeah. Oh, you're asking quarterly or monthly? So uh, it's more to do with quarterly. I wouldn't necessarily say I wouldn't I wouldn't say uh, monthly. I'll probably more say quarterly because I have a more of a more of a bigger view um, uh, or a macro view. So let's say, for example, we get one you know quarter which isn't as as, as good as you know uh, the previous two quarters. Then you kind of have to drill into, or what I have to do is drill into the causes of that one um, bad. Uh, quarter, right? Is it because there are problems that are um, that are uh, continuing or potentially going to continue, or is it, or is it like a blip? Basically, is it something? Is it a problem that you know it was because potentially you know coronavirus, you know outbreaks, which we have a vaccine for now. So um, could it be temporary? Could it be a temporary? Uh, a situation or could it be a longer lasting uh, situation so again judging on whether the you know GDP is either you know long, is it, it's a longer lasting problem or whether it could be potentially just a temporary problem that's when I will start to look for um, you know, uh, potential changes and the same thing, applying the same thing with inflation, even though inflation is a lot harder to uh, predict. Um, generally, again, you still want to look for, you know, inflation trends, right? Where is it trending towards a 2% target? Is it, and again, depending on where we are right now, are we, in, in, are we uh, close to that 2% target? Are we suffering from deflation? And also as well, reading up on on our you know fundamental analysis right we have to keep abreast of the um the news so generally when you're when you're reading uh the news you will tend to get a general sentiment and an idea as to what the financial institutions are also thinking and what they're concerned with right so it's a feedback loop we do our fundamental analysis right so we're here let's say for example and then we come to you know a conclusion right and then our conclusion i don't know if this is this is, if this is the right uh type of a uh, diagram but basically what we're looking for is like a a uh, a feed uh, i guess a feedback loop right where we do our um our analysis and we come to a certain conclusion and then we're looking for confirmation um you know to confirm that 
um, uh, that analysis, right? That's pretty much what we're doing. And we go round in a circle. If there is, I guess, a break in that, let's say we do our analysis, yeah, but the but the banks and the financial institutions are saying something different, then it gives you pause for thought, right? It gives us pause for thought and we might think to ourselves, well, there's something, you know, not right here. If I'm doing my fundamental analysis, but the bank's saying something different, then, you know, is 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 it, or, or the forecast is saying something different as well, then is there, there there's obviously a problem so um you know we 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 kind of it's, it's almost like we we're we're continually um keeping on top of the data for us to continually have our you know fundamental bias but when does it change um again it, it takes a lot for it to change but it's a mixture of sentiment. It's a mixture of reading up on the news. It's a mixture of, you know, certain data as well. Again, GDP, inflation, um, forecasts, etc. But overall, um, we have to kind of balance just changing our view every time we get some bad news. Because we could have, for example, lots of, you know, good news, right? We could have one news, you know, loads of news events, brilliant and then we get one news event that isn't great yeah does that mean does that negate does that mean i should change my mind about all the other potentially good news like no for me it has to it's, it's i guess it's, it comes down to um it's almost like a a weighing machine right if you're jumping on the scales you have to do the pros right and the cons yeah. And if you've got more pros and cons, continue with your bias. If you've got, you know, more cons than pros, then you might want to start to change your bias or just not trade that. Morning, Cal, Cal Merg. Yeah, no worries. No worries, mate. You can just listen in. Um, so that is really that is really where my bias um, uh, will change, for example. All right. Um, I haven't had. Uh, when, when was the last time I changed my bias? Okay, my change of my bias would probably be mainly this year. It's probably been euro dollar. Yeah, I was just going to say it's been on the euro dollar uh, or the dollar euro, right? And if you go back to those videos where um, I guess I have changed my mind, it has been due to, you know, GDP and potential inflation. So uh, as an example, as, a, as an example, right, let's go to the chart. Uh, euro dollar, right? So last year, uh, what were we on the daily? Yeah. So, uh, sorry, one sec, guys, one second. Sorry about that, guys. Apologies. Um, right. So, uh, euro dollar. So changing my mind and changing the bias, I guess, for the euro dollar. So, uh beginning so all f pretty much uh all of last was we'll it all of last year but from around july august we were always we were we were long if you go back through in fact the news articles on the euro and on the dollar at the time right news articles united states if we scroll all the way back if i don't know how many articles we have to kind of scroll back through but in general um uh, we were looking at kind of long trades. There was the election. You have to remember that there was the election coming up and uh, we were generally long euro dollar. There was a lot of dollar negative sentiment, etc. Towards the end of January, there was news uh, and, and I guess data supporting an actual dollar short trade. So what was happening was there was a shift in, for example, GDP and also inflation, right? Because what was happening was, is uh, if you saw the, 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 the dollar index around, because you had all of this pretty much movement here as far as the dollar getting weaker, inflation was, you know, going higher and there was a potential shift in um in 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 the bias and the recovery of the, the euro dollar overall also as well euro the uh, europe were lagging behind in terms of um the vaccine rollout right the the the, the us uh, were vaccinating their um their their citizens at a, at a much faster rate than europe europe were having problems 
So I changed my bias towards the end of January. Yeah, I think it was maybe 25th, 26th, 27th, something like that. Um, and pretty much you could see, you know, what happened. Bias didn't change um, until probably somewhere around here. Somewhere I was still short, trying to get short, you know, at certain places. We lost a few trades on here. Um, and it was actually a bit confusing uh, from, and I actually thought, fundamentally, I think I was still right. But I think what was happening was, is that the market was still was pricing in um, a euro recovery yeah, so they was they were pretty much uh, potentially trying to close the gap. It turns out, in fact, that um, that didn't actually um, you know uh, materialize, even though it was it was kind of like a buy the rumor, um, sell the fact kind of thing. And then what we've had is again from a from a changing of our bias, if you, or if you want to change your bias on it, if you if you kind of switch your bias to go long euros, which I did kind of halfway through this 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 move up, not necessarily against the dollar, but against other currencies, I was probably I was, I was more long euros, especially like euro yen, for example. Um, you know that was where um, uh, you wanted to probably potentially go long euros and then maybe about a month or two later we had again recently a massive shift in a surprise hawkish uh bias right for the fed where they were talking about potentially now hiking rates sooner rather than later so what's happening is now again is that the uh, the European Central Bank are really kind of holding or lagging behind, whereas the dollar is now looking at hiking. Of course, the uh, the data has to support the narrative, but this is the reason why you're seeing things like this start to happen. But the point, again, being is that when do I change my bias? It's only really when you have, you know, some major news events or when the data right when the data supports a change and, and i'm not talking about for example you know things like home building or retail sales or anything like that i'm talking about the, the, the big news you know like unemployment you know gdp that type of stuff um and employment is when i will start to change my mind and again it, there also has to be um a trend as to you know it can't just be one bad you know, unemployment figure, right? That might, you know, set back the Federal Reserve or the central bank from hiking, but it won't necessarily, you know, deter them totally. They'll just wait for, you know, for good data to come in. But but you want there to be a, an upwards trend, you know, at least, you know, two or three readings of, of, of a positive trend before you start to, um, or negative trend before you start to kind of change your mind when it comes to um, uh, changing uh, your mind on the data. So I don't really change my mind too much, to be fair. And if you've been with me for a while, I rarely change my mind. I might go from maybe being, um, you know, bullish on something to, uh, you know, maybe not being or just not trading it. It won't, it, it rarely goes from bullish, you know, to bearish, if you know what I mean. It will go from maybe trading it to maybe being undecided about it. Do you know what I mean? Generally, because if you think about the trades that I've that I've been talking about this year, I've been long Aussie, Canadian dollar, and the New Zealand dollar for since last year, maybe about November times, October, November times, and this was ever since the vaccine rollout. And I haven't changed my bias, and I've been short on the yen and the Swiss franc. Yeah. And I've been mainly trading these pairs. Yeah, yeah. there's been some other pairs, of course, euro, euro, dollar, et cetera, in the mix and stuff like that. And even pound, pound Swiss and pound yen. But in general, these have been the pairs that I've literally been trading and my bias hasn't changed. And um, I think a lot of traders do get caught up in changing their bias every week, you know what I mean? Or every, you know, every couple of weeks, as soon as there's good news or bad news, they try to make money on um, every single, you know, up and down move. And this brings me actually onto quite a nice, uh, you know, say it nice, but a, a bit of a subject on um, understanding uh, risk sentiment as well. And I did mention it in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the talk. And it was really to do with the, the, the ultimate goal for me, yeah, is to, is to, is to buy at value. And it should be for you. If you trade or if you invest, for example, if you invest for the long term, 
you know, you've got an ISA or you invest in, you know, stocks, commodities, et cetera, bonds or whatever it is, you're thinking more long term, right? You're thinking more retirement, et cetera. And if you have that mindset, it's and I and I and I do, um, I, I apply it to trading. So I tend to have more of a medium to long term view when it comes to my trading. And so if I've got a view on a uh, certain currency pair, let's say, for example, Aussie yen, right? The only way I'm buying the yen, the only way I'm buying the yen is if there is sustained risk off, right? So we go back to, you know, total lockdowns, not temporary lockdowns, but, you know, there's no vaccine that's going to help anymore. The, the, you know, the, 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 um, the, the, the Delta variant or any new variant is just, you know, wiping people out, right? There's real concerns. I understand that we are going into certain local lockdowns and cities are being locked down, etc. But from the perspective of my overall long term view, you have to think about vaccines. You have to have faith, yeah, that, you know, um, we will get back to some sort of normality and that we will find cures and ways of handling these things, right? So in the short term, so in the short term, you're going to see some pullbacks, right? You're going to see the market might trend down, you know, a couple of hundred pips, right? But if we understand that when, you know, the, the, the longer term view, right? If we understand the longer term view, hopefully we should, yeah, be longer term bullish, right? Now in this period of time, in this period of time, that might be maybe, you know, one month's trading, right? That might be maybe three months trading, who knows? Now, I have to still believe that the, the in in the global recovery um, uh, uh, narrative, even though there are times where there's going to be some risk of sentiment. But my my perspective is I'm going to just going to continue to buy at potential demand zones. Let's say, for example, that's a demand zone, right? Right, because when things turn around, the upside potential is massive. Yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm just literally as long as the data supports the narrative and as long as, um, you know, uh, the Australian dollar has a higher uh, uh, um, interest rate, you know, you're looking at carry trades. And as long as they're ahead of the Japanese economy economically, yeah, for me, risk off. Yeah. Risk off, meaning when the, when the yen strengthens, when we get pullbacks or deeper pullbacks, it's just buying opportunities at levels that's that's how i'm looking at it now there are there is another school of thought where you can you know try to trade risk off right so you're trying to you know go short here and then you're trying to go long here and then you're going to try and go short there for me for me and i'm not saying that you shouldn't do it right if you can do it successfully by all means you're a better trader than me <laughs> right you're a better trader than me for, for sure um but for me, I find it difficult to uh, go long and short regularly. I find it easier. I find it easier. And what works for me is to just look at certain, you know, key levels, either, either CPR, stop hunts, daily supply and demand zones, and then look for trades in my bias. I don't care if the market has been trending against me, you know, all week or all month. It, it doesn't it doesn't really concern me because what, what does concern me is I can take, you know, a, a few losses, right? I can take, you know, three, four, five, six losses. That's fine. Seven losses in a row. Brilliant. I know my downside uh, risk, right? If I'm risking, you know, uh, half a percent on a trade and I risk and I lose 10 trades in a row, then I'm only losing, you know, 5% of my account. Yeah. But if I'm right, if I am right about when I am, when I am right, I'm not going to be right in every single trade, of course not. But when I am right about my trade idea, yeah, my upside potential, well, there is a limit to it, but it's definitely going to be more than 5%. So I'm, I'm overall, I'm not concerned with the downside yeah, and losing trades. I'm just concerned with when I'm right about trades, I'm going to make more than when I'm losing trades. Yeah. Does that mean that I'm, you know, that you're going to make money every single week or every single month, etc.? It, it it doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't concern me in, 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 in the short term. 
But what does concern me is, is making money when I'm right and when the market agrees with me. That is what I'm really um, concerned with. Now, again, everyone has their choices. Everyone does have their choices and everyone can say, well, you know, I've missed out on this downtrend, which would, you know, was maybe, you know, two, 300 pips to the downside. Again, that's your choice. Yeah, that is your choice. I think personally, a lot of, um, if, if, if you do have that mentality as far as a real pure trader's mentality, then fine. But I like... Me, I like to combine, yeah, fundamentals with technicals, right? And I'm sitting in here. That's me. Yeah, that is me. I'm somewhere in the middle here and I'm combining both. And my fundamentals are saying to me, go long, yet prices are doing something different. Again, I understand that, you know what? Uh, yeah, you can you can mock. You can add a question. Um, I understand that I'm just buying at value, not knowing exactly where markets are going to turn around. But when they do turn around for me, my upside is going to be more than what I'm going to going to lose on the downside eventually. Um, so, with that being said, I think I might have just covered what does that change. Uh, does my bias change fundamentally and uh, my, my overall outlook? Uh, selecting uh, feedback just quickly as well, while I've got, you know, uh, quite a few people in here. Just to remind you guys, please, please, please. And it's like, I feel like I'm begging you guys to, um, <laughs> to post stuff. Like, sorry, when the reason why I, I constantly ask you guys to post things is because it really benefits you if you post charts and post the trades that you're potentially taking, yeah? It's not about being right or wrong or just before you take them, for example, right? And getting feedback because the benefits of mentoring, right? The benefits of mentoring is to get really direct feedback and understand, you know, before you potentially take a trade, if you're doing the right thing. I'm not saying whether you're going to win every single trade, not at all. That's not the whole point in this. This is the point in it is to understand that you're doing the right things. Yeah. Whatever your mentor is, is, is showing you, right. Me being, you know, your mentor, for example. Now there's a huge difference to, um, you know, watching just videos on YouTube or, you know, any other, if you join any other course, right, any other course, watching a video is still not, you're never going to get the feedback, yeah, that you need and the intricate details that you need in order for you to understand whether you're doing something wrong or you're missing something or getting another perspective. I don't know how many of you have been in other um, uh, trading rooms, right? I don't know how, how many of you have been in, in, in other trading rooms and other chat rooms and things like that. How many of you? before me is anyone anyone been in any other in any other forums any other trade rooms or anything like that yep yeah, no yep yeah, no yep yeah, no anyone no oh you haven't Eddie. okay well uh you you kind of skipped the line then i'll tell you i'll tell you how 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 it is and i've been in i've been in several you don't get feedback Right. Yes. Uh, uh, whether it's a signal group, whether it's a signal group. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it says I'm sure signal groups don't count. It's a place where you can easily undo all of your hard work. Absolutely. I watched a couple of vids, but this is oh, OK. So this is maybe your first one. All right. then. Um, so you've kind of jumped the skip the queue. But I'll tell you what I've been in a few. Yeah. Before when I first started, I I, I, I did, um, you know, have a few, right? And one, one was, 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 was actually quite good, similar to this, not necessarily as, as, as hands-on, but um, one, I can't, I can't lie, there was one that was actually quite decent. But generally, I've been in maybe about six or seven over the years. And um, not, again, not to, not to, um, not to, uh, 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 talk bad about anyone's anyone else's service but because they run it how they run it right but you there's no way you would get this level of, of of feedback yeah you could post a chart and the person who is or the people that are supposed to be um giving you direct feedback will not give you the direct feedback in the in the detail in the videos that you will get from me i can i can and I'm not saying that there's nothing out there like you, like me, not never. Of course, I wouldn't say that. But 
in general, a lot of the, um, from what I see and what I've been through my experience, you, it's not beneficial. You just literally sit there in a course, in a room, and then people just chat nonsense and they talk about things that are just totally irrelevant. They bring other things into, you know, trading, um, you know, in, into their forums. And it's, 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 it's really, you know, a mess. In order for you, mentoring is, 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 is about that feedback loop, right? What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? But the only way you're going to know whether you're doing something right or wrong is by um, participating. I can't read your mind, right? I can't read every one of you's mind. You have to take, I don't think, maybe you don't appreciate it, right? But trust me, after searching for a mentor, a trading mentor, right? And I and how, how lucky I was and how fortunate and how blessed I was to come across my mentor and that changed my trading, um, trust me mentoring is not one of those things in the mentoring that that I do or, or Mark Chapman does is something that is 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 commonplace right it just it just doesn't it really it's very you're very very lucky to have to have um any kind of trader trader mentoring and think about it like this right think about it like this your popular YouTube Facebook um uh you know Instagram uh, uh traders right do you think they actually would have the time yeah, to get back to you personally and make a video for you when they've got, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of traders. Do you think that you would even think about getting the feedback that you would on your chart when they've got thousands of other people posting charts, chatting nonsense and doing whatever? They're probably driving their so-called Lamborghinis around and how they trade on, you know, and trading on the beach and, you know, eating at expensive restaurants all the time. You know what I mean? Like they haven't got, do you think they got time yeah, to get back to you and your and your chart, see if you're doing, you know, you're you're doing what you're following their instructions. No, right, and they won't. So my whole point is just to wrap this up. Definitely, and I'm begging you. You know what I mean? I'm begging you, guys. Just post charts. Don't just talk about it. Don't just say, "All right, then." Yeah, I'm getting in long on a on a on a on a on a, on a euro on the euro dollar, you know, or this, that, and the other, like post the chart so I can see exactly what you're seeing. Then I can give you direct feedback. Do you know what I mean? It really will help. It helped me use my brain while I'm here, you know, while I'm here. And I'm not saying I'm going anywhere, but if the unforeseen was to happen and let's say, for example, you know, trading 180 was to stop, believe me, you're, and, and, and hopefully you're not out in the wilderness, right? But Use my brains, use my brain for sure. Uh, so let me just, uh, I'll, I'll go into selecting the trade idea and having patience, 